everybody. So my name is Karen, and I'm a developer on the Android Relations team. And today, we're here to talk about Camera X. So I'm really excited that you all have showed up, because it shows how enthusiastic you are about the Camera X library that we just announced in Google I.O. So uh, if you recall, back in May, Google I.O. announced this new, uh, the Camera X team announced this new library for the alpha version of Camera X. And the idea behind developing this library was that everybody knows it's been really frustrating to develop camera apps, right? Camera 2 API is really hard to use, especially with the camera stack. It's, there's been a lot of fragmentation on Android devices. So figuring out how to battle the different inconsistencies to make sure your app performs consistently across all kinds of devices has always been a challenge. So those are the two main problems that the team was trying to solve when they came out with this new library. So we've seen a lot of excitement and eager from developers trying to incorporate this new library into their apps. So we're really excited to tell you more about what we've been working on for the past couple months. So specifically, the team has been focusing on three major areas. So the first one is adding new capabilities and new APIs so that you could build out even more features for your camera app. Second one is we know everybody really cares about testing and making sure that you have stability and that each time you ship your app, the same consistency is there in your app. So we worked on enhancing the stability of the library. And the third thing is we also heard there was a lot of excitement over extension functions. So extension functions, if you recall, are these special capabilities that you can now tap into as third-party camera developers. So features such as Night Mode or HDR that previously were only available for first-party native camera apps are now available for developers. So we worked a lot on providing more compatibility for these extension functions. So jumping into the new capabilities that we've been working on, uh, in terms of new APIs, we really wanted to listen to the developer community to figure out, hey, what is it that you guys want to focus on and what would help you most in developing features for your camera apps? So some of the main features that we were able to implement include tap to focus, zoom control, uh, device rotation info so you can better handle the, the different configurations on your apps, flash ability based on lens, so querying for whether a specific camera lens on the app on the phone has flash ability, and a lot more. So the thing about adding these new APIs, when the team was building out these new APIs, the thing they wanted to focus on was one, easy to use, so it's not as hard to use as some of the camera two APIs that you might be more familiar with. And two, we really wanted to focus on making sure that as these APIs are built out, they work for all the devices. So low-end devices, high-end devices, we want to make sure that when you're building out these features, they work the same across all kinds of devices, and they're compatible with all kinds of devices. Uh, the second thing that the team really focused on is really making sure that every time a new version of the library is shipped, we wanted to make sure that the same kind of stability is still there. So you might have heard about the test lab that we have where we have 52 different kinds of devices representing over 200 million active devices out there in the wild. So this is really us trying to make sure that every time you ship a new version of an app, you don't have to go through the pain of testing the feature on all kinds of different phones. So we want to ensure that you can have confidence in this library. So we added stuff for a unit test, integration test, functional tests on all kinds of devices, from low-end devices all the way to high-end devices, so that you can really be sure that when you build out these features, it's going to be OK. And lastly, uh, some, one of the things that a lot of developers were excited for were extension functions. So extension functions lets you take, into, lets you take advantage of capabilities such as night mode or HDR mode that previously were only available if you were native camera app developers. So these will now be open to third-party developers as well. So we wanted to work on expanding the footprint for these and adding additional manufacturers. So I think when we announced this at Google I.O., we didn't have as much capability for this. And now we've added a lot more compatibility. So devices such as Samsung phones and LG phones also now have capability for allowing you to add extension functions. And specifically, it's really exciting that starting in Android 10, all Motorola phones will be open to enabling uh, extension functions for developers. And besides working on just adding capability and adding more testing, um, the Camera X team has also been working really closely with the Lens Go team to kind of get a sense of how the library would perform in the wild. So for those of you that aren't too familiar with it, Lens Go is an app that lets users point their camera at a specific visual and do some visual analysis to kind of translate things in, visual, uh, in real time. So this is a really good opportunity to integrate the Camera X library into the Lens Go uh, app to see how it performed. And specifically, it's really good, it was a really good way to test how the Camera X library would work because Lens Go was built for low-end devices specifically. 
and millions of users are using LensGo every month across hundreds of devices. So getting a sense of how the CameraX library performs in LensGo was a really good way to kind of get a sense of how it would work for developers once we release the final version of CameraX. So CameraX was used in production, and the CameraX team worked very closely with the Lens team to resolve different kinds of issues. So what this means was because we were able to work closely with the Lens team, we were able to kind of figure out what kind of uh, incompatibility there was and what kind of fixes that we needed to make to make sure that when you start using the library, you already have all these fixes in there, so you don't have to worry about these inconsistencies yourself. And some of the biggest benefits that, cam uh, that the Lens team saw from integrating CameraX, one, uh, it was a smaller APK size. So instead of them having to maintain their own camera stack, they were able to just use the CameraX library. So this allowed them to take out a lot of code that they previously had to maintain and update themselves, and also device compatibility. So due to the extensive testing that we were able to do in our testing labs, they were able to ship features faster because they didn't have to spend as much time testing these new features every time they put out a new version of their app. And now to talk a little bit more about how you can integrate CameraX into your library and some of the APIs I brought up, here's C from the CameraX team. Okay. Thank uh, so thank you, Karen. My name is C, and uh, I'm an engineer working on the CameraX team. So today, I'm going to walk you through some of our new APIs. But uh, first, for those of you who are new to CameraX, I would like to recap the basics. So the basic element in CameraX is called use case. So before creating CameraX, we took a look at how the camera API is used, then build the use case around the most common scenarios. So currently, there are three use cases, the preview, the image analysis, and image capture. So the preview use case allows you to have a viewfinder in your app that shows a live camera feed. So the image analysis use case gives you the access to camera frames. Uh, you can get the bytes and run your algorithm against it which enables features like object detection or uh, augmented reality. And the capture use case simply allows you to uh, take the picture and save it to disk. So the use cases are straightforward to set up. There are three steps in setting up a use case, configuration, binding, and interaction. So let's take image capture, for example. So suppose you want the app to take pictures. The first step is to create an image capture object with the config. So in the config, you can specify parameters like the resolution of the picture. So there's a challenge here. Like users love Android for its device diversity. However, it can be challenging to us developers because the parameters works on one device may not work on another. But in this case, camera X will handle this diversity for you. For example, if the device doesn't support the resolution you set, it will simply fall back to the second best thing. So the configuration will always be successful. The second step is binding. Uh, there are different life cycles in an Android camera app. The life cycle of activities, the life cycle of camera and capture session, and many more. So by binding the use case to a life cycle owner, CameraX will take control of all the life cycles, so you don't have to manage the state machines yourselves. The camera is open when it's needed and released when it's done. The last but not the least, interaction. So you, once you have the use case set up, you can start using it. So in this case, if you call take pictures, it will snap your picture. With those three lines of code, you will have an image capture pipeline. So now that we've covered the basics, um, let's talk about the new things. So the API I'm going to talk about are camera control and camera info. Those are high-level APIs that allows you to uh, control the camera directly, independent of the use cases. So for example, if you have a preview use case and image capture use case, when you update the state of the camera, like the zoom, the flashlight, or, uh, or the other, like other status, you'll be, uh, you should update for all the use cases. So this is where you can use camera control. Uh, next, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how to build popular features with camera X. So the examples are tap to focus, pinch to zoom, and zoom slider. So the first example is tap to focus. Camera X already supports autofocus, but sometimes you want user to have the manual control, like allowing user to set the focus by tapping on the viewfinder. So there are two challenges if you want to do this with the camera tool. The first one is that you have to figure out the transformation between the UI coordinates and the camera sensor coordinates. 
And also, you have to specify the size of the focus area. Let's see how to do this with Camera X. So this code fits nicely in the viewfinder's untouch callback. So assume that you're using text view for your viewfinder. So you can transform the, the coordinates by calling text view metering point factory. It takes in a text review and the UI coordinates, then it returns the metering point, which is the sensor coordinates. So this is only for text view. For other views, we have other factories. So once you get the metering point, you can create an action with this. Um, so this action is called focus metering action, which means you want both focus and metering happen around this point. And then you give this action to camera control, and camera X will take it from there and handle the rest of the work. And that's for type focus. It's really simple. So the second example is pinch to zoom. So this is a feature where user pinches on the viewfinder and the camera zooms in and out with the user's fingers. Again, to do this with camera two, you have to figure out the transformation and crop region. Let's see how to do this with camera X. So there are two values we need, the base value and the data value. So the base value is the current zoom ratio, and the delta value is how much it's been changed with the user's pinch. So to get the delta value, uh, first create a scale gesture detector. So this is an Android object uh, for, for converting a uh, touch event into a uh, scale factor. And the scale factor here is our delta value. Then we can use camera info to get the base value. So camera info is the API for getting the current status of the camera, like the zoom ratio, flash availability, or sensor rotation degrees. So once, once we have the two values, we can combine them and set it back by calling set zoom ratio on camera control. So camera X will figure out the crop region and send the request to the camera. And that's it. That's uh, all you have to do for a pinch to zoom. So the next feature is also zoom, but slightly different. Uh, say instead of pinch to zoom, you want to have a zoom slider. This changes a lot of things. You can no longer use the API from the previous slide because the user experience will be inconsistent. Uh, let me show you an example. Suppose you have a camera that can zoom from one to 10. So this is the zoom ratio. When you zoom from one to two, uh, the field view will shrink by 50%. When you zoom from nine to 10, although it's the same distance on the slider, the field will only shrink by 10%. So that's a bad user experience. So we have this API called set zone percentage, which is designed specifically for this case. You can call this API directly with the slider value, and it'll do the transformation internally, and uh, the zoom will be linear. So that's for zoom slider, uh, just one liner. So um, we've talked about a couple of APIs here today. Note that not all of them are available right now, but they will be in a release coming next month. So there are other things we are building, like previously the preview use case only support text review, but now we're adding support for uh, surface view as well. So I cannot cover all of them in this talk. If you're interested, please check out the resources online. So on the dev side, we have a sample app and we have code labs. And we also have blog posts, videos like this one, and uh, documents. So this should be enough to get you started. Um, today I also have a good news to announce. So in the coming December, we are going to launch the beta version of Camera X. So this is... <laughs> so this is truly a big step forward. So being in beta means two things. First, the API will be more stable. You will see less API change once it's in beta. And uh, second, the code quality will be held to a higher standard, which means it will be less buggy and more tested. So overall, it means it's ready for production. We already have internal adoption, like the Google Lens Go. So if you are also considering to migrate into Camera X, this is a good time. So that's about it. I hope it's helpful. So if you're interested, please check out our booth here at Android Dev Summit. We have engineers there to answer your questions, and we have some fun demos there. And if you're watching this online, you should go to our Google group. 
So you can post your questions and leave your feedback in that group. We have people following that group as well. With that, I thank you all for coming.